running your own server or the mods mod pack is relatively straightforward. Um, I did make a previous video of this, but it's now obsolete um, as Curse now requires um, mod pack owners to eliminate or leave out the minecraft.jar uh, and the forge.jar from the uh, packs. Um, this is due to the end user license agreement requirements um, not allowing third party distribution of those uh, of that code so in other words the minecraft server dot jar code um, so essentially what we're doing is very similar to what the last video was we're going to the curse forge um, page this um, is all the other ones too which is the latest pack um, for the latest version of minecraft which is 1.11.2 um, if you want to do a different pack and um, this can be uh, found just by looking for all the mods light or the mods sky or all the sky um, and various other all the mods uh, mod packs that the um, mod authors have put together if you are interested um, you can visit all the packs.com that uh, displays a current uh, list of all the mod packs available under the, all the mods brand but um, for the purpose of this video we are going to go to files we're going to check out the latest version um, and we click on the, down, uh, the plus one more little button here and this will bring us to a new page with server files listed we download this file Once this is downloaded, we are going to extract it to um, the place where we want to host the files um, or just extract it to a temporary location if you are going to um, host it on a different operating system or a different computer. For the purpose, well, I should say how I run my mod packs is on um, a Linux server. Um, obviously this is Windows 10 um, I run my client from Windows 10 but I connect to my own servers I'm on a, another box so now that that's extracted <coughs> you'll notice that there is a significant change if you have viewed the first video the first tutorial based on setting up a server um, the file list is different. We still have the config mods and scripts file folders here. We have two new um, files here. These are both scripts. Now these scripts will um, do, a, do several things. Um, they will check to see if there is the Minecraft server files and the Forge server files in this directory. If they're not, they'll download them from the internet. They will run the server. Um, they do have a auto start routine built into the script. So if the server crashes, it will restart, um, but it'll only restart up to 10 times um, before the script cancels itself out. Um, this is to stop an infinite uh, crash loop, which you may get, which isn't uh, healthy if you're not near the server. Um, one thing I should point out is that at the moment with these packaged files, um, these are created in Windows and they've got um, the incorrect encoding. So what I normally do here, the bat oops, the batch file will run fine in Windows and the .sh file is meant for a, a Linux file system. But I'm running on Linux so I need to fix this file. And as you can see here, it's got Windows uh, control line feed, I believe that is. Um, what we want to do is to change that to Unix. So right click on here and go Unix LF and then save the file. Otherwise you'll get an error when you try to run the script uh, within Linux itself. So the next step for me at least, um, because I have to transfer the files to my Linux server, Just to copy these across. Now this is for creating a brand new server, there's a different process for updating the server, uh, but we'll cover that in a future video. 
So now that's transferred, I can log into my Linux box via SSH or via term via the um, physical PC if you're at if you've got one like that. Now you can see that we've got uh, your server start .sh there. At the moment, this sh won't run because. It's permission denied because I haven't um, modified the permissions on this to make it executable, which I will do now. And now this should be green and we should be able to run this. So what it's doing now is going to um, download the Minecraft and the Forge server binaries, as it says there. Um, as it's downloading um, the Forge installer, at least the Forge installer isn't the actual Forge.jar file that it uses to run the server. It actually is a file which um, executes and downloads a different file and installs it to the server. So once that's um, finished happening, that's where that moving unneeded file photos to delete me happens. They're no longer required, so you can safely delete those after the installation process. Now, to install this stuff here, it'll run the server um, and it will run the initial uh, iteration of this. And it's going to stop because it doesn't have an eula.txt file in the directory, which is created during the first start, but it's actually set to false. So now it's actually stopped. So I want to exit that because what I want to do, I'll just check to see if that, yeah, it's there. So what I'm going to do is edit this file, change this to true. What you also want to do is to edit your uh, server properties file as well. Um, okay, so what I've decided to do here is to go to another server that I'm currently running um, and simply creating or copying the server properties file across because the server properties file at the moment is empty. Nothing in it. So, uh, I'm just going to copy this across from here to here. Then I'll either edit it, you can edit it here or you can edit it back in um, your terminal window. But it's just easier to edit it with Notepad. Yes, when I reload it. So, what we've got here is all your standard stuff. If you've run servers before, you're very familiar with this. And I'm not going to go through. Um, all of the options here, but my what I want to do is to make sure that biomes are plenty. Uh, biomes op is as the level type because biomes are plenty is in this pack. Um, max players is another important one, particularly if you've got um, a relatively bad internet connection, or if you just don't want that many people on the server. And this one here I'll change DM2 version zero point five two. And I'll change this to two six uh, to sixty six two five five six six because I'm running another server on this um, hardware with the standard port. It's the only reason I'm changing it. You don't need to. You can leave it at two five five six five. It's this, that's the default Minecraft port. This should, yep. Should ask me to reload. Yeah, there we go. That just uh, recognised that I changed the file and it was different to the to the server version, so it asked me to update it. And from there, I think we're pretty much ready to <coughs> run this again. Now I don't want to force reinstall. That ping to Google and ping to L4 is just an internet check to make sure that your internet's up. Now keep in mind that um, we haven't set up port forwarding because my port forwarding is already 
pre-configured from previous servers that I've run. Okay, so we've got the server up and running now. First thing you want to do is to add yourself as an op. So now that we've got our server running, let's see if we can get online. And we should have, oops. Ops, because we created ourselves with ops. And that's a pretty crazy spawn point for this world. But yeah. And that's it guys. Um, that is as far as you need to go as far as uh, from creating a server's point of view. Um, your friends or anyone you want to join the server will not be able to play will not be able to connect to your server until you set up port forwarding to the port um, that you've pre-configured um, if you left it at default that's 25565 uh, otherwise in my case it's 25566 um, there are plenty of um, tutorials or guides out there to uh, direct you in how to do so um, but I'll leave a few in the descriptions um, but by all means you can check out allthepacks.com um, for more links to playthroughs, uh, other mod packs uh, under the uh, All The Mods branding um, and also obviously check out the Curse page uh, for a direct download for this pack. So Oz Hand signing off, thanks for watching this tutorial um, and we will catch you later.